Thank you very much to the organizers for the honor bestowed on me to deliver a message on the state of South Africa's poorest borders to this auspicious audience. Every country who is concerned about the securing its sovereignty, integrity and the safety of its people must be very cognizant about the protection and safeguarding of its borders from the illegal and unwanted cross-border movement of people and goods. South Africa is no different and given the international interest and presence in South Africa, we and the strategic route around the Cape is of strategic value to both our allies and our adversaries. While most of the legal cross-border movement happened at the 52 designated cross-border points, most of the illegal and unwanted movement of people and goods happened in the rural areas between the official points of entry. Border safeguarding in South Africa is a multifaceted and interdepartmental domain handled by the Departments of Home Affairs, National Treasury and Customs, Police, Defence, Health, Environmental Affairs, Transport and Agricultural, etc. A comprehensive border safeguarding strategy requires a multifaceted focus on the land, air and sea borders to have any chance of success. We've got a vast border lines in South Africa. Our land borders 4,471 kilometers, our air borders 7,660 kilometers with a total airspace surface of 1.2 million square kilometers. Our maritime borders is 3,924 kilometer coastline at the high water line and our exclusive economic zone is 1.5 million square kilometers and our maritime service territory is 4.3 million square kilometers. Safe border lines are critical not only to, this, to safeguard our sovereignty and to secure the safety of our people, but to assure investors our country is open for business and eager for investments, for which we are in dire need to go our economy and to create jobs. A strong and healthy economy will not only reduce the unemployment in South Africa, but will unlock the wealth of our natural resources and manufacturing capacities, which we require to afford a higher than the current 0.67% of GDP defence budget. If the decline is not arrested, it will exacerbate the downward spiralling of the defence force and its critical capabilities. For many years, our defence industry enjoyed a reputation for the most advanced technology and manufactured prime mission equipment and we must find a way to regenerate and actively promote the strategic capabilities of our South African defence industry. Our defence force and its needs for critical capabilities will require the support and partnership from the defence industry to strategically equip the SANDF and to earn much needed foreign exchange to support economic growth. The legislative mandate of the SNDF in border safeguarding is provided for in the following ways. The Interim Constitution of 1993 stipulates the role of the SNDF in protecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the state as well as service in the upholding of law and order in the Republic in cooperation with the South African Police Service. This notion is reflected in the 1996 Constitution in section 201, subsection 2, which allows for the deployment of the Defence Force in cooperation with the South African Police Service. Section 18 of the Defence Act of 2002 made provision for the role of the SNDF to effect national border control. The Border Management Act of 2020, in making several references to the role of the SNDF, demonstrates that the BMA does not replace the SNDF in its border safeguarding functions. The Department of International Relations and Cooperation recently released a framework document on South Africa's national interest, which made several remarks that may shape and influence South Africa's future approach to border safeguarding. The SNDF is deployed on border safeguarding duties under the code name Operation Corona, with a focus on the control of over illegal movement of people and goods across our land, air and maritime borders. The function and mandate contains elements of law enforcement, 
enforcement of the state authority and defense of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of the Republic. A grey area will always exist between the functions of other government departments and that of the SNDF with context of its border safeguarding role. Let's analyze the landward, air and maritime functions. The prime function of landward border safeguarding is to deter illegal cross-border practices like trade and unrecorded and uncontrolled movement of people, animal and goods across our border. The deterrence is intended to force people to utilize the designated points of entry, thereby keeping a record of movements and control of traffic, including vehicles, people, goods and the collection of the correct custom duties. We currently have 15 subunits or companies to patrol our land borders. Four is in Limpopo, three in Mupumalanga, three in KwaZulu-Natal, two in the Free State, one in the Eastern Cape, one in Northwest, and one in Northern Cape. There are reports of the increase in conflict due to illegal and unlawful cross-border movements of our porous borders and the increase of threatening activities in Southern Africa, most notably the DRC, Zimbabwe, Swaziland and Mozambique. In the case of the latter, there are clear indications the insurgents are migrating south and even establishing cells in South Africa, which must be seen as a serious threat to our integrity and sovereignty. Critical geographical gaps identified along our borders our Botswana border area between Maiking and Pondrift, Northern Kruger National Park border, Swaziland border with Mpumalanga, and Eastern Lesotho border with the KwaZulu-Natal. The current hotspots and identified geographical areas must be resourced to make sure the gaps are plugged in a sustainable manner. Suggestions are received to improve the Defence Force's reaction capability as force multipliers include reprioritize border safeguarding responsibility and optimally resource it with the required technology, funding, requisite human capital and equipment to become a lethal response force to plug all the holes along our borders. Increase the deployed subunits to 22, improve the logistical support to the deployed soldiers, improve aerial support and surveillance of the borderline to determine activity hotspots and to improve mobility to react to the threats. Invest in the purpose-built protective vehicles to do border patrol. Invest in high-tech, satellite and cyber technology capabilities to have a 24-7 surveillance and observation. The South African Air Force prime mission function is to conduct air operations to assist the Defence Force in protecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the Republic. Air border management encompasses control over the broader sovereign airspace covering all South Africa's territory both over land and sea. The control of South Africa's airspace is a complex endeavour which requires advanced te technological and highly trained professionals. Our airspace is a national resource that must be used on a non-discriminatory basis to benefit South Africa, especially in support to grow our economy and to create jobs. It includes all airspace above and linking the roughly 1,200 airfields, airstrips and airports within the South African landward and maritime borders. If poorly guarded, the airspace presents intrusion opportunities for illegal border activities with, amongst others, small aircraft flying along low radar cross sections at lower altitudes and using sophisticated equipment such as GPS and radar detection systems to avoid our detection. Since the redeployment of the Defence Force to the borders, air border safeguarding has been neglected. The South African Air Force has a very limited and outdated aircraft intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capability, which are further exacerbated by a too low defence budget, which in turn is due to the poor South African economy or GDP. Currently, we have a lack of aerial patrol capabilities over the land and maritime borders. 35 Squadron, which is responsible for the maritime patrols and surveillance, has the service of only the one old lady Dakota. Her capabilities is to compare analog with fifth generation digital and cyber technology. 
just not good enough anymore. This can be attributed to wrong and outdated air defense priorities and insufficient budget, which negatively influenced the availability of air assets and surveillance technology. Unfortunately, there seems to be little or no political will to take bold decisions by the Commander-in-Chief and the Ministers of Defense and Finance to rectify the situation. The South African Navy's prime function is to conduct maritime operations to assist the Defence Force in protecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of South Africa. This cannot be conceived in the same way as land borders, as it relates to more than simply a line of control. Maritime borders should be viewed as a broader territory in need of control, extending over the entire and all the exclusive economic zones. The ocean offers immense economic opportunities with enormous natural resources that must be guarded from our adversaries and non-friendly parties. Unfortunately, the guarding of our maritime territories have been neglected as well, which left us with too old and too few naval vessels to make a significant impact on the protection of our maritime resources and most notably failing to support Operation Pakisa to unlock the enormous economic development potential the ocean is offering. The lack of political will and leadership has left the Navy and its strategic capabilities as a, only as a shadow of its past, its potential and its need to assure a safer and more wanted South Africa. Even with the introduction of the three new multi-mission inshore patrol vessels, we still fall way short of the minimum requirements for the effective maritime capabilities we require. In my opinion, immediate interventions required to stop the decline include the following. Strong and unwavering political and management leadership and a will to make the right decisions in the best defence interest of our country, regardless of its political and or personal unpopularity restructure, reprioritize and reposition a smaller and more efficient defense force in compliance with its constitutional mandates and approved budgets. Reprioritize border safeguarding to the top of the list. Reprioritize strategies and expenditure to achieve the objectives and especially critical capital expenditure. Finalize an integrated national maritime security strategy and the current budget of 49 billion rand or 0.67% of GDP is about 16 billion rand short to support this and should it be increased over the medium term to at least 1% of GDP. My suggested budget priority should include increased land border patrol operation to at least 25 companies, invest in appropriate cyber, satellite and UAV technologies as force multipliers for a 24-7 land, air and maritime patrol and reconnaissance. Cost of employees must be reduced to no more than 55% of the budget to free up funding for, for maintenance and acquisition of prime mission equipment. Landward defence should get 38% of the budget. Air defence no less than 16%, maritime no less than 15% and force employment 10%. To achieve this, the following must be implemented without delay. Reprioritize border safeguarding, drive rejuvenation among soldiers, terminate project to Sano, reduce military health support to 3% of budget, liquidate unserviceable, obsolete and underutilized assets in favor of capital expenditure projects. Embark on a multi-year capital expenditure program to replace our strategic helicopters with upgraded versions, replace the C-130BZ with adequate numbers of newer and reliable transport versions, acquire multi-purpose maritime and border patrol reconnaissance and surveillance aircraft, upgrade the unserviceable frigates and, and submarines, acquire new multi-mission outshore patrol vessels as well as additional multi-mission inshore patrol vessels. Acquire appropriate cyber, satellite and UAV technologies as force multipliers. Upgrade and replace critical Army prime mission equipment such as APVs. Reconsider Project Hoofaster with fewer badges 
in combination with RATL upgrades. The SNDF has become a broken entity, unable to fulfill its core constitutional mandates under various situations. It needs this turnaround now, because tomorrow might be too late. The consequences of inaction could be far-reaching, especially now that the SADC region faces a growing threat from extremists. Eventually, it will be up to us, our defence and military partners, domestically and internationally, to work in close partnership to optimally prepare and equip the SANDF for any possible eventuality or threat to our integrity, sovereignty and safety of our people, and to provide the continuous support, logistically and otherwise, to reposition South Africa to play a meaningful role in making the world a better and safer place for generations to come. I thank you.